Hello guys, my name is Mark from JazzTerrasons.net and just ad-libbing a little bit on this 251 in the key of C major, which is exactly the topic of this video I want to address. So number one, thanks for being here. Uh, of course, uh, the, my mandate is to show you practical, useful stuff on the guitar and what we will be doing today is using, uh, I will call them 251 chordal licks, meaning um, how come you see or maybe you hear me, it's like, oh, I know some of these things, but not all of it. How do you... Uh, develop a vocabulary beyond being stuck with, oh, I'm doing 2-5-1, I'm doing these chord shapes and you're stuck with a certain bar shape. Uh, how do you go beyond, add your ninths and thirteenths and flat ninths and all of this? So thanks for being here and I'm going to do my best to uh, do that. Uh, a little bit of a note, I, I noticed in my uh, statistics, what well, the reason for this video is because I looked at the stats for the YouTube channel. So. I know about 60% of you watching this are not actually subscribed, so most of the views on the videos come from non-subscribers, so if you like what you're learning here, please do like and subscribe to get more and more content. Uh, it's simple, there's hundreds of videos, but it only takes one where you will go like, oh, you grasp this idea and it might change your playing forever. So this is totally free, hit subscribe. And so the idea for this video also came from a statistic that the videos that were most watched in the past year or so are the toolbox ones. So there's a toolbox, um, the 12 chord shapes that are useful for jazz terrace, and then 251 shapes and a few other ones. So I'm like, hey, I should shoot a quick follow-up. So here's the follow-up. We will look at two different locations of using a 2-5. So the 2-5-1, the key of C is of course D minor 7 to G7 to C major 7. We'll use this location and this other location. And you can find all these chord shapes in the other video. What I want to do is show you materials around here and then around here for the key of C so that you always have two locations when you are playing a song so you can probably uh, jump around a little bit less, right? Because you always have a close one, a closer one when the tune changes key, say when you're comping. So the essence of this is, of course, knowing where the basics or where the shell voicing is and then adding some stuff on top and making it very melodic. Like I was doing it, I was just, you know, uh, what's the word, noodling in the beginning of the video. <clears throat> so I'll show you how to noodle around and how to explore the material that you have by giving you a lot of options. Once again, here's the method for working on the stuff. If you stumble upon something that you find cool, it's like, oh, that's nice. And that's unfamiliar, it's like I've never played this. Grab that and let this be the only idea you extract from the video. I'm, I'm gonna go through a lot of different stuff but once you have the material down, it's easy to add and pile up on your foundation. All right, here we go. So D minor seven, uh, as we know, this is the third of D minor seven, and this is the seventh of D minor seven. So if you were to play it with a root, you'd get this. And then going to a G seven, you'd get this, right? So what we will do is just for now, completely let go of the root and see how we can develop that D minor seven. So first, first place I would go to develop a D minor seven is to add a ninth, so here. Right, And then what I'd like to explore is how many different melody notes do I get from using this very shell. So by shell I mean third and seventh. So here we have the ninth, but also if you bar your index, behind it you have the, the tonic, so the D note. So you have D, you have E, you have F here, then you have G. So you can keep the ninth here while playing the G, which is the eleventh. And then this is the fifth. So all those options are good with or without the root. You can do it with a root or you can let the bass player take care of it, all right? So you can play effectively this. See how you can melodically develop just still one on only one chord shape. And then, of course, when you get to your G7, which is the other chord, you will have your C note resolved. Uh, sorry, I'm a bit far from the camera, right? Maybe I should have set it up differently. Um, <clears throat> you have your F and your C, and then you will have your C lower to a B. And that's a third of your G7 chord. Notice how the seventh of the D minor seven resolved down to the third of the next chord. The seventh, sevenths have a necessary resolution, all right? So that's what we'll do. So we'll go, and then we start to ask ourselves, how many variations of top notes can we get on that G7 without changing this? So the first, very first place I go that's obvious is the 13th. And then the 5th also. And then the 7th is here. The 7th of G7, of course. And then the G is here as well, so how about this? A 13th 
with a with a, a G on top. That sounds beautiful. Uh, what if we took it back to being the D minor seven, right? How about we go just that? Already, it's amazing. Perfect voice leading, and then maybe the A note here as well. So how about we keep the thirteen in? So you can do it with four fingers. Also, you can learn to do a partial bar with your your third finger, your ring finger here, right? Ho! Oh. Already, we're we're starting to you know to get into town with that kind of voicing, right? So imagine if we're going. Woo! I'm already looking at the C now, right? So. So far we've explored the D minor 7 and we've explored the G7, but the G7 we haven't put any of the crazy stuff, so we didn't talk about sharp 5, flat 5, all these things, so how about we explore those? There's four main uh, alterations on the G7, you call them sharp 9, flat 9, and sharp 5, flat 5. They come by different names, but the, the logic is the same, so when you're about to resolve to a C, it's really good to add some tensions like this. So let's look at those. The first obvious one for me is always this guy. You call it a flat 13 if you want, or call it a sharp 5. The other one you have is this guy, which is a flat 5 or a sharp 11, sharp 4, sharp 5, sharp 4 or flat 5, same thing. And then the other one is the flat 9 here, so you could do 13 flat 9. Uh, you could do it with four fingers like this. Woo! Or 13 sharp 9. That's a spicy voicing right there. All right, so um, now that you you beef up your G7, you're like, all right, it's G7, now it's G7 flat nine altered, it's time to get to the C. So notice how one of the ways, one of the things that's gonna be super applied in this video is that it's not about that chord shape right now. It's always about the sense of destination. So the D minor seven, G7 has a point of a target, a point of sitting. It's like, oh, we want to land there. So the smoother you are at landing, the less important it is actually what chord shapes come in. It's like, what what did the melody help you do? And by melody, I mean top note. So you're basically like doing permanent chord melody, which is nuts, right? It's And that, that's the art of it. So how about we go from this and go... And now I'm at a C. Let's just explore a few C options. So your C has a shell. So third and seventh of C, right? But the seventh is not always necessary. So you can change a seventh to a sixth. So you get, so that's, personally, this is always my go-to, this guy. So it's C, six, nine, so nine. So it's all fourths. And then even you can add another one here. That's what I just played earlier on. So that's a really good go-to voicing, all right? And another one is, of course, this guy with your top note here. So you can start to extract how many top notes I, I can have on my C major, which I'll leave you do because, you know, we've already been looking at these things for about 10 minutes now, so I don't want this video to go forever. Uh, C major nine is also a good one. So C, E, B, D, this guy. So the the... What we'll be doing, I want us to practice together. Pick one of the variations that you like. I will put the metronome on and we can actually, actually literally practice together. So you have like four rounds or eight rounds of trying this stuff. Once again, the exploration is pick one thing that sounds cool to you, that sounds unfamiliar. It's like, oh, I've never done this and practice that with me. Uh, all right, let's get, let's do a round of practice. Not too fast, like a nice little swinging tempo. Yeah, that's like 108. So that's a metronome on two and four, right? Here we go, D minor seven, G seven, C major for two bars. A one, a two, a one, two, a three, four. Sharp nine. Flat 
flat 13, my favorite, C6-9. Last time, sharp 11, woo, and just an open C major 7. All right, so I went through a lot of stuff fast, and you know, I can't really cover, uh, sorry, I can't uh, really cover all the variations, because like, what if you have that note and it's just passing in the chord? Well, that's the sharp 5. Yes, it's right, but then there's countless variations that you can create from a handful of D minor 7 top notes, so the ninth, the D, the... Uh, etc. You can have with the bass, without the bass, you can have your G7 not be altered, then as soon as you start to add alterations, the melodic components, it's, it's uh, what's the word, uh, fr uh, not fractional, um, the word I'm looking for, exclamation point in mathematics, um, ah, I forgot, you know the permutations thing, uh, any math guy will watch his viewers remark, yeah, yeah I know, I know, I totally, uh, not fractional, fractals, that's not the word I'm looking for, ah, it'll come back, so, we went through a lot of stuff fast, I, we yet have to cover the next uh, inversion of this where what we'll do is keep the 3rd and 7th on the same strings but move them further up the neck. Uh, what I want to tell you before is, as I'm going through this stuff fast, there's tons more that I teach in my uh, Insider program of course, and I will just encourage you to go take a look at it because we go through sh the shell voicings, those with the 3rd and 7th on the middle strings for applications and copying, applications and chord melody and as well as those are the guide tones for when we improv so there's a way of doing that that I call my concierge method you can get trained in the concierge method for free right now just type in mastery.jazzguitarlessons.net mastery.jazzguitarlessons.net you're gonna get a free six-part training and then see when the program opens if you want to join um, it is a, a really cool uh, I mean you know a chord is a chord we I didn't come up with any chords or any scales However, um, it's the, the six part, the free six part training is teaching you more like how to learn because you have probably tons of books already and DVDs and these YouTube lessons, but that program that's about to open, I call it the mastery program, uh, really puts everything in a line, go learn this, A, B, C, learn this, learn that, learn that, without being like too uh, overwhelmed or diffused. Uh, uh, diffused, is that the right word? Dis dispersed? Right. I'm French, see, I can't even speak English. Uh, let's do the second version. So we go top on top here. So we had F and C. Now we have C and F. So your your shell is here, and your next shell is here. So that's B and, and F. So instead of going, we go, and then the C chord, of course, is here. That's a so. Now we're gonna do the same process. Abandon the root and start looking at what. What can that D minor 7 give us? Well, right off the bat, we have this. With the 5th on top, how about with the 7th on top, the ninth is here, right? Uh, so you can have the 7th and the ninth at the same time. Even the 3rd, that's pretty bland, but it still works. Uh, one that's sort of outside the box I want to show you is this guy. I love using that. If I were like Ted Green, I'd do this. But I can't always reach reach this this guy, so I will do this and then this, and then same thing goes for a G7. So I'm going faster through this because it's the exact same process as we've done here. Same process. I will just go uh, G7. So top A note, uh, top D note, top E note, right, um, and then we start with the flat nine, sharp nine. So the sharp nine is here. Flat 9 is here, encourage barring, then flat 13 is here, uh, that's flat 13, flat 9, of course you can have a knight with a flat 13, the, the alterations they work better together, so if you do a flat 5 you'd rather do a flat 9 than a natural 9, and then here we have the flat uh, sharp 11 or flat 5 on top, right, so with that being said, you will get in the world where you start with simple and then you go you know you, you develop this vocabulary and it seems like a lot of stuff and sounds like wow but then it's all based off of the same thing so I'll let you pick your favorite ones 
move these extensions around. Um, uh, let, let me just recap. So by far, my favorite for this this guy on the D minor is always to go. I always do this. And then with the G I go. And for the C I go. So this is sort of my go-to. I'm sure I have a go-to for this guy, but I, I don't know what it is yet. So we'll find out as we go. So yeah, probably that. Yeah, okay. So D minor nine to a G. So it's a sharp nine and a sharp five. And then same for the C six nine. So this shape. A little word about this guy. So here you have B E A and D. So it's a C. It's a C major. 13, if you will. This same shape works here with the C on top, and it works here with the G on top. So those are three uh, C majors. They work for the C major, so it sort of liberates your fretboard. And one more I will show you is sort of using an E minor 7 in the place of a C. So you go, right? And even removing the, once again, the B goes down to an A, so that's one of my favorite voicings of all time for the C. And then you get to play, you can either play that note or that note even. There's ways to modify it, but it has the B on top. So I will often go. Woo! That's like starting to happen. So let's do the same thing. Actually, let's just put the metronome and see if you can pick one thing you like that you find cool that you can rehearse with me. Okay? So same tempo. A one, a two. A one, two, three, two, five, D minor seven, G seven, plain, C plain, D minor nine, Woo, altered, and then you go down when it's too high. Again, two, three, four. My favorite. Woo! Again, two, three, four. You can mix both to it. Christmas, right? Sounds like a Charlie Brown Christmas a little bit. So one thing I forgot, and I'm sorry about that, uh, for the D minor there's still another one that's super important, is getting the, the 11th behind. So this note, that's a really good one, because then you can go on a G, that's pretty plain. Also for do, you guys that are advanced, what you can do is have the F and the, the B here, so this, you have them here, so it opens up the door for a rootless G7. Uh, here, so you can go. That's a effectively that's that, right? And then you can go to those. So I think we went through enough materials for now. You have a two five lick a co of chords at the bottom of your fretboard here in the key of C. You have a two five lick at the top here, with you know my favorite like all the night and the sharp nine whatever, and then you get to play around melodically with that. Put your metronome on, practice again with the video. By, by the way, if you haven't, rewind the video and play along with me. And if you have, good job for that, because that's exactly um, that's exactly how most people learn. That's how I learned. You will be sitting with a teacher and just rehearsing this chord changes. And it's like, oh, what is he doing? Well, what's that? What's that? And then you sort of pick it up, right? There's a lot you can learn from books and etc. But then going in and rehearsing with me is the best way, the, the only way you'll actually be able to internalize those things. Uh, long vlog, I know, sorry. So once again, if you want to rehearse more with me, I'll encourage you to check out the mastery program because that's the essence of learning the improv side of things and the comping side of things. There's playback with me, play along with me videos with the sound slice and everything. Uh, but before looking at the program, I'll just encourage you to check out the free six part training. Head over to mastery.jazzguitarlessons.net. I'll show you exactly how um, 
how to how to learn jazz guitar, right? Not just like, oh, this chord and that scale, but secret recipe. It's more like, well, how if you've been playing jazz for a long time, how come you've never b become a master of jazz? It's perhaps because there's ways to address these materials, like the ways of practicing that are important. So that's super important. Once again, please like and subscribe. It's always a pleasure to have you. I hope you gained a lot from this video. There's tons more on the blog, so jazzguitarlessons.net slash blog, as well as on the YouTube video of YouTube channel right here. So please hit like and subscribe, and I will see you soon on my website, jazzguitarlessons.net. Improve your jazz guitar playing with a real teacher. Take care, guys. Bye.